ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man who got fan mail from a ventilation unit, Craig Charles. I don't tell you what I told you, but a few years ago at a nuclear power station near here, a broken down old microwave and toaster were thrown out to rust. Now no one thought anything about them until they were exposed to some radioactive waste and mutated into the most hideous appliances ever. Now, together they lived happily and made some beautiful toast. But then the toaster fell in love with a tease maid called Delilah, and then the fighting started. That's how Robot Wars was born. Three years later, and the descendants are about to go to battle again. But this time it's not over a tease maid, it's over a place in our series semi-finals. Philippa, who are our contenders? Here's the heat, here's the robots. This one, I got in the sweep. The crew will always do a sweep, and this is my robot. And you haven't even built it yet. So oh, well. quickly, quickly, quickly get a move on. Millie and Bug, do you remember this glamorous robot? Oh, hello. Do you remember this glamorous robot from last year? She now has no hair, although I've promised that they've got wigs and her own range of jewellery. So I can shop while Robot Wars is on, which is fantastic. Also, father and son team who apparently have not bonded at all. In fact, quite the reverse during the building of this robot. It's great to see Robot Wars bringing families together. Uh, Bumble got the key thing here. Well, one of the key things, you've done a lot of work on this robot, is layers and layers and layers. So hopefully no axe can get through. And then this is the Grim Reaper, with uh, kind of battering rams at the front, which are air-driven, and a skeleton across the top, just in case you think you might not recognise. Um, our tortoise here is Shell Shock, yep. with the special feature, arms and legs. Yep. Yep. Just decoration, no weapons. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But we like that. We like that. Ah, oh, hello. Hello. Hello, Joe. How's Big Brother coming on? All right. Yes? And you've even found time to play Tress? Yes. Yes. Mm. Are you winning? No, it's not me who's playing, it's Daddy. Oh, really? Really? But the, the robot's all ready to go, yeah? Yeah. With, with this swinging yep. weapon? Yeah. Okay. You, you be careful, you can have your eye out with that. And then, when a robot costs £3,000, you have to wear a DJ to even come close to it, let alone play with it. Absolutely. And the smell of polish makes you feel <laughs> sick around here. They've got nothing better to do but polish Sir Crum a lot. It's a class act. <laughs> Well, we shall wait and see, Philippa. So, Chromalock first up, booted and suited to kick out Shell Shock. Big Brother with Little Joe. Will it be checkmate for Grim Reaper, a spooky looking robot? Bumble Bod in the insect war against Millie Ann Bug. And then it's Flipper against Altor. A family at war or heading for family fortunes? Right then, let's get stuck in. Let the wars begin. From Essex. The crew along. And what a lot to boast about. An extending sledgehammer with cobalt cone cutter, a raising body shell made from a truck alloy wheel hub, and what a bill at the end of it all. £3,000 to put together. What style though, what panache, high rollers. Look how they arrived today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Sir Cromalop. Hello there, I'm Steve. Dave. Steve. This is a Sacromalot. It's a stainless steel cone at the front with a cobalt tip in front of it, which is absolutely devastating. This thing will travel at 10 miles an hour and all the force goes to this tip. We can lift up a total of six inches, so if we pierce someone, we're also able to lift them up. It spins around on its own axis. It's a motor direct drive to each wheel and it's 18 volts. We've watched the last two wars. This is a winner. We will make mincemeat of all the other robots. From Colchester, Shell Shock. The shock comes from an electrically powered axe. The shell is two millimeter thick sheet steel. Two 12 volt golf cart motors provide the power, and they shelled out only 170 pounds to build this. This is Team Shell Shock. Here's our creation. I'm Oliver. That's Paul. That's Richard. Our main weapon is the axe. Lethal steel killing machine. This is the cone community snail, constant companion of the shell shot, who is obviously based on a tortoise. Robot ears, stand by. Here we go then. Sir Chromalot, with Captain Steve Merrick in the centre, Steve Smith and Dave Whitehead. And Shell Shock Three, with Oliver Young two, and his pupils Paul one, Logan and Richard Wilson. 
tortoise saw the hair-raising experience offered up by that Sir Chromalot spike. Shell shock. The snail on top. Slowly, slowly. The axe crunches down. In comes the spike from Sir Chromalot immediately penetrating the shell. Oh, look at that. Already a puncture mark. The axe flails away for shell shock. And actually now seems permanently down. I think they've lost the hacking ability of that electric motor-driven axe, shell shock. Steve Nerick, the 42-year-old captain of Sir Steering operations and steering shell shock into the CPZ, the corner patrol zone, and that means Matilda, the house robot, can come in. And already getting in on the action there. Rolling shell shock away. The tusk just getting hold of the body of shell shock. Oliver Young there, the captain who wants to write a comic book, hardly finding this funny. And shell shock now pushed towards Killalot and turned up by the posh boys of Sir Chromalot and Sir Killalot. The knights combined together. How lovely. How posh. In comes the Chrome Lotter again. Knights of the round table. All honor and class. Are you sure? Bit of skullduggery going on here, chaps. Poor old Shell Shock. Trying to get away again. Is Oliver Young and the boys. You just get the sense if Sir Chromalot can edge Shellshock towards that pit, it could all be over. Oh, goodness me, can Shellshock do the reverse, though? And just nudge Chromalot in there. And what's happened to Chromalot here? I think they're on fire. The boys used to catch her in, smoked kippers are smoking themselves, but there's still movement. They're not immobilised, and Matilda shouldn't be doing that, and they know it. The house robots can't come in there. There's still life in Sir Chromalot. Oh, God! The house robots! Goodness me! The high rollers are rolled out! But should the house robots have got involved there? Cease. Well, they're laughing in all their pain, but I think there was life in Sir Chromalot, and Killalot came in with Matilda and finally finished it off, but that's not right. This is the Matilda camera. Ooh, I'm not too sure they should have done that. We'll wait and see what happens here. Well, controversy is never very far away on Robot Wars. And although Sir Chromalot is smouldering in the pit and appeared to be immobilised, the judges think they saw some movement, and so he was unfairly pitted. They'll have to make a decision. But before they make the decision, let's look at that amazing fight. Well, immediately Chromalot on the attack, and spiking shell shot. The sparks flying too. Always under pressure here. The tortoise-like shell shock, Sir Killalot flipping up into the air. Oh, a crunching slam to the arena floor. But it was Sir Chromalot hitted, not by shell shock, but by the house robots. Sir Killalot had the final push. In went Sir Chromalot. I don't think they should have done that. It goes to the judges, Craig, and they have their decision, look. Well, the decision is in, and I don't agree with it, but I'm not a judge. Shell shock will be shell shocked because they've gone for Sir Chromalot. So, what do you think went wrong? Uh, or was it just the mean judges? Mean judges. It was Definitely. just the mean judges. You feel really guilty. Well, we're not very popular anyway, so no, not really. <laughs> Are they popular? You're popular. <laughs> Are you right, is it? <laughs> right, go back to your tables. Ooh, boo, hiss. But it's the Chromalot who goes through controversially. And next up, Big Brother against Grim Reaper. From Brighton, Big Brother is watching you from behind mild steel armor, the weaponry, a steel whip with chain and wrecking ball known as a morning star. Wakey, wakey! It's Susie and Watts, and that's Wayland. And it's called Big Brother. These are the deadly spikes. And they'll spike the other robots. From Wagner Regis, Grim Reaper. Name just 
spell doom and gloom and air ram at the front and spike at the back of the weapons the shell is steel plate in a wire case will the smith family reap the dividend i'm simon this is my son luke my brother gary we're the team grim reaper it's a 20 mile hour robot it's uh, driven with uh, two car starter motors solid rubber tires uh, 250 psi ramming spike it's mainly built off uh, head-on speed and at the back we've got a lifting device also works as a ramming spike and uh, it's really do some damage and send people to their grave Roboteers, stand by so much work has gone into grim reaper simon luke and gary smith and big brother in little joe watts and Three, Wayland Twiston Davis. Two, one. Captivate. Oh, tremendous start there by Grim Reaper. Straight on the attack. No spluttering or a coughing of that engine. Straight into gear and attacking Big Brother. Grim Reaper, though, very dangerously near. Sergeant Bash, a real South Coast derby this to teams from Brighton Big Brother and Bob the Regis Grim Reaper being chased across the floor of the arena there by Bash. Underneath goes Big Brother and very dangerously towards the pit of oblivion. Big Brother, what on earth were they doing there? Ian Watts, I bet little Joe had words with him. Back comes Grim Reaper again, spinning away. Look at that tight curve there once again. Very small turning circle. Only six feet. Grim Reaper has lost a wheel. The wheels come off. Slamming them into the back of Big Brother. And the wheel comes spinning off for no time for a pit change here. That's really stupid driving. Grim Reaper again on the attack. Top of the picture there you saw. One of the house robots and kill a lot you see can come out of its seat. He said the table. Oh, it's burning in there. Big Brother smoking away from the flame torches from the arena walls as that immobilized the engine of Big Brother. Grim Reaper being flicked up by Kilowatt with turnover. But I'm sure that's immobilized. Who's alive? Oh, is there a little slip of the tail by Big Brother there right at the end? But it'll go to the judges. Who goes to Boot Hill? Monster Metal Mayhem at its mightiest. We have a judge's decision. On damage and aggression, the winner is Big Brother! Controversy <laughs> all around! Did you do the design? Yeah, I was hoping it would be something like Sonic and it had a head that can pop out with spikes. That could pop out with spikes. Yeah, it jumps out and goes back on. But instead, you got this. Yeah. Oh dear, I am sorry. What happened? <laughs> oh dear, I'm sorry. What happened? Oh, it's, no, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's, all right. it's crying now, Joe. You've upset me now. Oh, it's all right, isn't it? Don't laugh. <laughs> you can have that. You stick it on yours because you know you're better. Oh, whoa, but not for little Joe. What did they feed him on, by the way? Big Brother through, and next up, Bumblebot and Millie Ann Bug. From Reading, Bumblebot. A heavyweight reserve in the last wars. It can bumble along with 15 miles an hour on two drive motors with its multi-layered steel aluminium plywood body can right itself when flipped as well. I'm Andy, this is Matt and Sarah. And this is our robot, Bumblebot. Electric drive. Pneumatic weapon. It's got this long, nasty stabbing axe. It's also capable of flipping the robot over if it gets turned upside down. Powered by a half ton pneumatic ram, and this is what it's capable of. Fantastic. And what are we, we going to do to the position? We're going to smash him! From Leeds, Billy and Bud. Back again, but modified from the last war. Steel spikes, the weaponry articulated for sure ground holding. The head and body independently powered and steered. They can lose their heads and still win. I'm Jeff, this is Martin, and that's Mark. And this is Millie Ambo. We have, uh, we can articulate in all directions, which gives us a lot of better ground holding. We've got four Bosch 750 motors and some really reliable electronics. We've got a few spikes front and back, and that's what we're hoping to get through on this year. Robot 
volunteers stand by. Bumblebot with Andy Noyes, Matt Jarvis and Sarah Corps. And Millie Ann Bug, Jeff Warren the driver, Martin John Dawson and Mark Whitworth. They're gonna bash him, said Bumblebot. Well, let's wait and see. Millie Ann Bug, great steering, ground control. What sort of penetrating power has he got though? What sort of weaponry really to create damage on Bumblebot? A huge great axe hovering in the air there. Like some great stork's head waiting to come slamming down on Millie and Bug. Great movement though by Millie, who dances across the floor with speed and agility and grace. And that's not bad pushing ability too. Or is Bumblebot just leading Millie and Bug off for a final smash down of that mighty blade? On the long pole though, is it really as advantageous as they thought it would be. Can they get a good strike there? Millie Ambag went very, very dangerous towards the fire pit there. The bottom of the picture. Millie Ambag turning away. You see, they're trying, Bumblebot, to get into a position where they can bring the big axe down. And at the moment, I'd say, on aggression and style and control, Millie Ambag will go through if this goes to a judges and the axe would fall on Bumblebot! Oh, Millie Ambag, what are you doing? Oh, no! Silly, Six. Miss Silly! Into the pit! Dear, oh dear. Doing all the hard work, pushing Bumblebot around, way on top, and then look! Oh dear. Millie, you've gone. What a shame. They look gutted. They know what they've done. Millie and Bug, constant aggression, constant harrying. Constant pressure threw it away at the end. Bumblebot must be feeling very, very lucky today because Bumblebot go through. Funny thing to say to you, Lot. No! 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 no. 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 You didn't ever even got a hair on. I can't but believe it. Right. Uh, we, we, we were going quite well, and uh, I think I was a bit overzealous trying to get them down the pit and just should have pulled back and then ended, ended up off with ourselves down a bit instead. Oh, what a shame. Was it luck or was it skill? I asked that well, question quite often. We were hoping to use our axe, but it fired once and we missed, and then it seems to have broken after that. But I okay. think Billy Ann Bug did a damned fine job. Do you do? I do. Yeah, we like it, don't we? We do, yeah. Stay fast. You can't appeal. <laughs> it's your own fault for not putting a hair on. Appeal? Breathalyze them. Millie Ann Bug out. Bumblebot through. Next up, Flipper and Ultor. From Essex, Flipper. The family team, the Deweys have compressed air spikes to protect attack and right the robot if it's flipped. The front raises and lowers, just like expectations, I guess. Neat and trim this one, though. Hi, I'm Kelvin. This is Richard, and this is Josephine. This is Flipper, which has two electric starter motors at the rear to power it. It's got a nice lax on the front. It's got a nice spike at the top to flip it back over if it turns upside down. From Cambridgeshire, also. Anodized aluminium and steel gives protection. This father and son robot is powered by lawnmower motors. Plans to hack opponents with an axe and then send them to the compost heap for the rear flipper. On all tour, we have two weapons. One is the axe piercing the tops of the robots and at the back we've got a rear lift to see if we can lift the robot and push it down the pit other ones down the pits the robots made with a steel bottom chassis and a glass fiber top roboteers stand by flipper the dewey family kelvin josephine and richard there on the left and ultor from cambridgeshire with Three. roger and barnaby golder one Barnaby at the controls of Alter. He's built remote control model boats and gliders in the past. He wants to become a better mechanical engineer. Steering away from Flipper. Into the flame there of Sergeant Bash licking away. Flipper turns to find some space perhaps for a charge in on Altor. You've got that front spike, you see. If Alter can get into some sort of position to crash down with a spike on the top of Flipper. I don't think that's caused 
Major damage though at all. There's the spike from the arena floor. Ultor trying another slam down of the spike. With Kevin, who's built a go-kart once upon a time, loves DIY in control. Oh! And this time, it's Ultor nearly flipped into the air by the arena spike. Matilda there on the left-hand side, coming out tentatively. Ultor just away from the pit. A skirting danger there. Out comes Sergeant Bash. Because, uh, was Flipper immobilised? If it is, then the house robots can come in here. And certainly they sense that they can come in for the kill on Flipper. Flipper is not moving. Taking punishment from Shunt. There's Matilda. In goes the axe of Shunt. Look at the slots being carved out of the top of Flipper. Through that three millimeter alloy folded, welded and shaped frame. Also needs to steer away from trouble and Matilda is dead metal. Penetrating or slicing through Flipper there. Off comes part of the shell, very, very nearly hanging on, literally by a metallic sliver. And at the moment, Flipper is in rigor mortis. Oh, and Altor is turned up and over. Oh, dear, what a daft way to end this. They were in control. Surely the battle is won because Flipper was immobilized and destroyed Jeez. by the house robots, but ignominious end for Ultor. I'm sure they won it. Let's hear it for Ultor, the clear winner. Did you think of Flipper as tough competition or no when you went in there? It was I'm hard sure. On, it's hard on top than we are. We, we're fairly confident we couldn't get through the top with our axe. You had um, a good old joust with Matilda, though, didn't you? Yes. Well, we thought, well, if we can't go out one, we'll have a go out the other. Matilda <laughs> was in the way. The bait. <laughs> Mixed time. <laughs> so, uh, four robots through after the judges' decisions. Big Brother and Sir Chromalot, Ultra and Bumblebot. It'll be Big Brother against Sir Chromalot and Ultra against Bumblebot. They're off to sew and mend. We can't take a breather, though. It's time for the second round in our Pinball Warriors Challenge. Our finalists are still making some much-needed repairs in the pits. So let's use this time destructively and see who can amass a high score in our Pinball Warrior Tournament. Each robot has to score as many points as they can by attempting various challenges. The harder the challenge, the more points on offer. Just don't lean on the machine while they're playing. You might just get chainsawed. Hey, let the trials begin. to score points five for each of those barrels down each target has a value 50 there you see uh, 10 points to knock into the multi ball to release those balls 75 points for that target 25 points to go through those doors you can also go up and over the ramp that's another 20 points points everywhere to be gained and let's see how the first runner in the pinball challenge got on dominator Steady start into the barrels, tumbling there, points picked up easily. Dodge the ramp, this is crucial, watch that barrel run into the multi-board and release. Five points for every one of those balls that is then sunk into a pit. Back come the house robots to exact revenge. We've got to dodge them, don't forget, in the pinball challenge. And as we can see from the leaderboard, that's a very creditable 160 points for Dominator. And the next up, Crusader onto the pinball. 80 kilos in weight, the weapon's a shovel ram with stainless steel cutting blade. The team, Chris Williams, Dave O'Reilly and Harry Bahra. Three, two, one, activate. Well, you presume Crusader will go straight for the barrels, yeah, that's at least 25 points on the board straight away. That's a little bit of control there, or was it dodging a flying barrel, trying to take a run up to the ramp? Not making the ramp, those barrels already down, Crusader, he can't score again. Ooh, there's Sergeant Bash waiting, 50 points gain though, that's a good charge under the 50 point tyre. What's happened here though? I think Crusader's impaled itself on the tyre. Oh dear, that's a major shame. Deflating problems for the Crusader team. They've got to get away from that tyre. There's Sergeant Bash and Dead Metal are waiting. Does eventually get away from the tire. No point attacking the tire. It's done nothing to you. Oh, well done. 
10 points for the release of the multi-ball. Now, for each of those balls going down into a pit, that's another five points game. Takes on Sergeant Bash at this stage. You want to get away from there. Look, that's, that's a ball that's been literally tattered and mashed. Goodness me, Chris Hayden nearly went into the pit. Driving insanely here. What's gone on? The lights are flickering on, but there's no one at home in this team. Goodness me. That's terrible driving, boys. I don't think Six. it's a very healthy score. Into the pit. Not a bad start. The barrels that sent flying. One, two, three, four, five barrels down. That's 25 points. Another 50 here, you see. But this is where they got impaled on the tyre. Releasing. The multi-ball gets another 10 points. The ball set scattering. Ooh, and into the pit. And confirmation, only 90 points scored, way behind Dominator. There'll be more from the Pinball Warrior Tournament soon, but now it's on with the wars. And these the four through, both controversially into the second round, Sir Chromalog and Big Brother. Bumblebot against Altor, but there's one star of the show so far, Big Brothers. Little Joe's in the pits with Philippa. The fastest robot can push the um, other robot and very fast and into the pit faster. And the faster it goes, the faster it finishes. Mm. Tactics, come on, tactics. I'm very concerned about their pushing power. As Joe just said, they can push very fast. Mm -hmm. And if they push very fast, we'll go in the pit. Mm -hmm. Have you got any tactics, then? It's a secret weapon. Will we get a glimpse of that secret weapon here, though? Let me tell you, the showmen of the Sacromalot team have had a special theme tune written for them. This is their secret weapon. Deafen your opponents. Oh, boys, are you sure? I, I know the hacker, the Maori dance, is to create fear, intimidate opponents. This will just have them laughing in the aisles. Grown men, respectable businessmen, are you sure? They've been great fun, though. Absolutely great fun. Magnificent stuff. And I'm sure Big Brother are impressed while that's going on. Oh, apparently not. Big Brother with its morning star weapon. Little Joe there up in the cherry picker with Dad Ian. And there's Sir Chromalot. And they've been great fun, haven't Three, they? Steve Merrick, Steve Smith and Dave two, Whitehead. One. Super entertainment. And off we go. First of tonight's second round clashes. So Chromalot immediately on the attack. That shell made from a truck alloy wheel hub. The Morning Star flailing away there. The wrecking ball on the end of the steel whip and chain. It's got a wedge shape also to get in underneath Sir Chromalot. But the body shell of the Knights of the Realm, if you like, can raise and fall to counter the attack of a thrust from a wedge. There's dead metal coming into the frame. There on the top of your picture to the right in the CPZ. So Gromalot spinning. Not a lot of damage being caused. The, well, the flame torches won't, I think, cause any damage. And so Gromalot's up and rolled over! And I don't think they can recover from that. In goes Big Brother. Falls and falls, and the pennants on the arena floor. And little Joe's delighted. And look at Big Brother here. They're already celebrating victory. And Dead Metal about to come in for the kill. As Big Brother steers away, one smash from Shut. Now he's got to be careful here. They want a little bit of luck. They want perhaps to be turned right it back over. But if they can grind through the base of Sir Chromalot, the house robots, it could be finished. Sir Chromalot needs Sir Lancelot and King Arthur and the rest to come in here for the rescue. Ooh, just slicing through the frame. Hit, hit, hit. I think the crowd are calling. And the main job now for Big Brother is just to steer away from all this trouble. <laughs> they know where they're going. They know where they're going. 
Avalon, Camelot, no Sacromalot. Not a lot left. And in you go into the pit. Drop a lot. And away you go. And now the house robots will close on Big Brother and try and inflict some damage. A little bit of revenge perhaps for them. Big Brother, of course, will go through. And it's go, go, go for little Joe. Well, well, well. Chromalot get that sinking feeling. And you'll be watching Big Brother in the next round. Big Brother go through. Them then. Well done. It was them that ended up in the pits, wasn't it? You said we would. Didn't you? Yeah, because it's the much lightest robot can get the fastest robot can and push the lightest one in very fast. So that is the theory of Robot Wars, according to Joe. Now, if you'd listened to that in the first place, right, you wouldn't right. be losers now. It's all going very well. He tried to push in the, a house room. I know. I know you he did. Too. Cheeky. <laughs> it's always that cheeky. <laughs> I wonder where you get it from. He's bad. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Didn't really know, did little Joe, but he's through. Well done, big brother. And next up, Bumblebot against Altor. So it's Bumblebot against Altor, and they look very similar. Similarly matched, similar kind of weaponry, similar kind of shape. Yeah? Yeah, both, both pretty similar, I think. Yeah? What? So what's your feeling? Well, um, we're aiming to go for our main tactic, which is big thrusts. Big thrusts with this big weapon we've got. Because you have got a bigger chopper than they have? Yes, certainly. OK. Much, much now that you mention it. Yes. Why well, you mentioned it first, right. just not when you were here. <laughs> Come on, then. Hello. Right, you've, we've established you've got a smaller weapon. Yeah, it's not the what size, it's the way it's used. OK, thank you very much. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> yes, the two teams rise to their vantage points. Look pensive, don't they? Both of them. Stern. Apprehensive. They're not. They're thirsting for engine oil to be spilt on the arena floor. Roboteers, stand by. There we have. Bumblebot, Andy Noyes, Matt Jarvis and Sarah Corpse, and Altor, Roger and Barnaby Golder. Three. Father and son. One. Activate. Barnaby likes his rowing and playing the French horn at the controls of Altor steering away from Bumblebot. Immediately trying to slam down with the axe powered by the lawnmower motor now coming in underneath Bumblebot. Part in the second wars in the heavyweight reserve category, Bumblebot. Modified, of course, took a year to build the Bumblebot team there. Very cagey early on. Shunt just comes out of its CPZ and then goes back in again. Just feeling each other out here in the early stages of battle. I think that Bumblebot weapon has been absolutely useless. It's like some toothpick to take on the house robots. Altor shoving Bumblebot towards Dead Metal. And Dead Metal clearly thinks the toothpick is useless too. Oh, we're fed up with it. Let's just cut it off, shall we? What were the Bumblebot team thinking about here? It's hindered their maneuverability. <laughs> Uh, don't use a toothpick. Go to the dentist, Bumblebot, like the rest of us. Altor. Look at that sticking out there. Oh, dear. Oh, rather forlorn, isn't it? Oh, dear. Poor old Bumblebot. <laughs> well, I don't even know that we go down the pit with that thing sticking out the end of it. Probably steers it away. No! Is that in the pit? I'm not too sure. It's sort of... Just leaning in. I don't think they're going to come out of it though. Andy Noise there in the middle of the driver with his short hair trying to extricate Bumblebot here from the mess. Oh, come on. Is there a little bit of buzz about the Bumblebot yet? Fly away, fly away, Bumblebot. Live to fight another day. I doubt it. Here's Killer. Oh, and Shunt as well. Oh, you can hear the crash. 
Is he going to go down in that pit? Well, maybe the weapon was sundered then. It just kept it out of the pit, ultimately. So Killalot says, well, we'll do something else with you. <laughs> He's pulling apart completely. Oh, dear. I should laugh. It took him a year to build this. Oh, I've had roast beef. Oh, dear, oh, dear. They might well look away. Well, no need for a judge's decision there. Ultor, the clear winner, and through to round three. Let's hear for Ultor! It's very sad. We've seen that next work before, honest, in the car park in Reading. Every time came down. We lost the end of our shaft as well, and the tip just came off. Size that matters is what you do with it. How often you use it as well, by the look of it. <laughs> well, four down to two. Sir Chromalot and Bumblebot have gone, leaving Big Brother against Altor in the heat final. Then there was two, but soon there will be only one. It's the third and final round. Are you going to win again? Yeah. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Sort of? Yeah. A sort of win? Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do to that other robot then? Flip him over. <laughs> and then what? And leave him like that. Have you got any tactics? Uh, like like Joe's? Just win. Yeah. How? <laughs> I've been told you, haven't Well, you have a small... Nobody trusts me anymore. <laughs> Big Brother through to the heat final, first of all by disposing of Grim Reaper. He went to the judges. It was a bit controversial, but all the damage and aggression had been caused by Big Brother. You can see there Grim Reaper lost the wheel, was tossed up in the air by Killalot, turned over, and then Sir Chromalot well and truly beaten in the second round in underneath went big brother flipping chromalot over and altor beating flipper damage caused by the house robots and though altor was flipped itself late on already through to meet bumblebot in the second round with that great useless toothpick cut off quite rightly so by dead metal and in the end pitted leaving Ultor through to the heat final Bumblebot first Robot ears stand by there we have Big Brother with Joe Ian Watts and Wayland Twiston Davis and Ultor with the Three, Goldor family two, Roger and son Barnaby one. Barnaby steering curiously, and it's Big Brother on the attack. And little Joe has been the hero of the heat, hasn't he, really? He's caught the imagination of everyone in the arena. Dad Ian in control, though. His hero's Michael Palin. His ideal job, he wants to become a beach bum. There, Big Brother flailing in with the morning star caught bow on the spike of Altor, who could drag here Big Brother towards oblivion. If they play it right, no, they let Big Brother get away. And could rue that now. There you see the, the morning star spike caught. They pulled in, almost flipped up and over. And then here is where Big Brother just gets away. On the attack again. Heat final. Replacing the series semi finals. Heave ho. Push and shove. We've seen the whip come down again from Big Brother. Oh, it is gone! The whip's come off! Look at this! The Big Brother in real trouble! Ooh! Off comes the flail! And now they have no weapon! Maybe the front sort of scoop ram there to get in underneath Altor. But this is a real chance! For the Golder family here. Ultor on the attack with the axe powered by the lawnmower motor. And the main chance for Big Brother is to get Ultor perhaps onto the big flipper there you can see on the arena floor. Or into the house robots. As long as Ultor stays out of trouble here, 
They could have won this one and it would be a surprise. Poor little Joe could be left in tears. Would we want to see that? I don't know. Altor pushing Big Brother around. And remember, I wonder if Big Brother has an even bigger brother to come back against Altor. Ultimately, one day, perhaps in a darkened robot wars alley. And Altor, very nearly in trouble off the arena spike, turns away beyond that flail. Now just a tattered remnant of robot wars brutality on the floor of the arena. In comes Big Brother again to try and flip Altor. Cease. But for me, and it'll go to the judges, I think the damage caused for the Big Brother team and Little Joe could be too grievous. Well, both the robots were still mobile at the end of that epic battle. So while we wait for the judges' decision, let's look at some of the fighting again. Well, it was all about the chain and flail, the morning star. Bang on Altor. In comes the Altor spike. Almost dragging Big Brother over after Morning Star had got itself tangled up. Big Brother, that's good control to get away. But you see the damage. Whether it was self-inflicted, I don't know. Who's won this one? Altor wins on a judge's decision. You can't get closer than that. Forget about bullfighting and those brave matadors, because we always see red on Robot Wars. Bye-bye. What happened then? Tell me. I'm afraid we lost. I'm afraid you lost as well. A bit sad, isn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't give me a cuddle, would you? <laughs> <laughs> More Robot Wars next Friday at 6.45. Oasis, The Spice Girls, Jamiroquai and more. The sounds of the decade and the Tom of the Pops 2 special. Turn it up for 90s night here on BBC Two next. some really nice news to you or not? Yeah? <laughs> okay. We've decided that the judge's decision was wrong, in our opinion, and we're allowing you to go through to the next round. You win. You win. Oh, <laughs> I get a great big cuddle. You get a cuddle now. Is that good news <laughs> or what? Yeah. Thanks, guys. Oh, they lovely, sportsmanlike yeah. and everything. Yep. It's not all blood and gore in Robot Wars. 